found that my study abroad experience in Senegal is, in a lot of ways, analogous to a bus ride, specifically a bus ride in Senegal. For one thing, one of the hardest parts was getting on. I had to decide it was the bus I needed and wanted to take. I ran to catch up and jump on, not exactly knowing where it would take me. Once on, I noticed the crowded, stuffy feeling of the bus. I was uncomfortable at times, and there were things I needed to adjust to. I was somewhere so new and so different, adjusting to things that now seem so insignificant, like learning to eat around the bowl and to bargain, adjusting to the drastically different climate, feeling very visible, very out of place. I struggled to find where I fit in on this bus. It was hard to meet all these strangers. Strange neighborhood, strange homestay, strange classmates. I knew I had to figure out where I wanted this bus to take me. Of course, I had an idea of where I wanted to end up, but I didn't even know how to pay my fare yet. I counted my change, seeing what I had to give, considering all the places the bus could take me. I paused to see what others were doing and followed suit, making my way via Pronti. In making my way there, I realized there were more obstacles than I'd expected. There was a language barrier and a constant sense of visibility and homesickness. There were many cultural differences, both obvious and subtle to adjust to. And of course, Dakaria. Ooh, that's spicy. It was a bumpy ride. I could feel myself becoming really self-aware and really self-critical. I was second-guessing every move, every word, and shutting myself off from others. The stuffy feeling of the bus was all around me. I could hardly breathe, let alone continue my trek to the Apronti as I so desperately wanted to. And it was during this struggle that I realized no one else was doing this alone. Everyone passed their fare through a whole line of people to get where they wanted to go. They let the people around them share the burden and help them along. Again, I followed suit. I used the support of the staff in the program to keep me up. I found balance within my host family, who gave me a place to call home, and let me ask all the questions, even the stupid ones. <laughs> I leaned on the friends I found all around me. They helped me to not feel so alone in my experience, to feel heard, and to be comfortable. I think it's rare to find such a sense of belonging on any bus. I also found a new internal balance. Reflecting back on my life in the U.S., I found the individualistic mindset I was raised with has a large effect on how I interact with people in the world. But my bus ride in Senegal has taught me a lot about the importance of sharing between people in your community. Whether it's sharing the change in your pocket, or sharing your burdens, or your points of view, or even just sharing a meal. This process of give and take makes for a strong community and strong individuals within that community. I was finally getting a hold of things. I planted my feet and found a good grip. I was learning to manage the twists and turns, and soon a seat opened up. I took it. I let my shoulders relax. I began to feel at ease and let myself look out the window at all that was passing. I began to feel these overwhelming feelings of gratitude and appreciation for this beast beat. Soon beast. For all the people I've met. For all the friends I've made everything I've been able to see and learn. It's truly been an incredible bus ride. But now our stop is approaching and I'm realizing that despite all the hardships that may have occurred while on this bus, getting off is the real challenge. To this day, I still can't tell you how to easily get off the Senegalese bus.